Hey, what's going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today I'm gonna to be talking about training and lifting in flat shoes versus shoes with a bit more heel elevation. So I have a cross training shoe, this will have a lower heel to toe drop, and then a weightlifting shoe, which will have a more significant heel to toe drop. If you look around online as to why you should use flat shoes, why you should use heel elevated shoes, you typically get a bunch of surface level answers like a flat shoe is good because it's flat and stable, like cool, but help me contextualize that. So in this video, I'm gonna try to do that and elaborate a little bit more on when you might wanna use each shoe, the benefits that come along with each, and how I like to rotate each of these shoe styles into my training. But that being said, let's dive into our first topic, which is why use flat shoes for training? So a flat shoe is going to have a zero millimeter heel toe drop. This means that the stack height at the forefoot and heel are sitting equal with one another. So when your foot is in the shoe, it is sitting flat with the ground. Now, instead of just saying, oh, a flat shoe is nice because your foot's flat with the ground, it's more stable, etc." I think it's more important to look at the question of why using flat shoes for your training from an anatomical and a training perspective lens. So when it comes to your anatomy and if a flat shoe is gonna be beneficial for you, you're gonna wanna assess how you move through lower body movements when it comes to your ankle range of motion, your knee and hip, and how a flat shoe interacts with the ground. So for example, if you're a taller lifter, you might find that it's really difficult to squat with a flat shoe because you do need a little bit more heel elevation to sink with a good mid bar balance and to get good depth with your squat mechanics and to feel a little bit more balanced. While other folks who are a little bit more hip dominant, they might be shorter regarding their femur length, shin length, etc., might find that flat shoes feel very natural for them. So the first reason reason why I think some lifters and athletes should explore flat shoes for lifting is to think about their anatomical asks with their training. If it feels really good to squat barefoot, for example, and you don't find that you need a weightlifting shoe or a heel elevation to hit depth, feel balanced, etc., with your lower body movements, then a flat shoe can be really useful. I also like to approach the topic of using flat shoes for training and lifting from a training perspective lens. So on top of your anatomical needs, you can look at what you're doing for your workout to see if a flat shoe will feed into that really well. So for example, example, if you have a deadlift day or an RDL day where you do want a flatter foot position, you want to be lower to the ground, then a flat shoe can make more sense for that context. You don't want to be deadlifting with a weightlifting shoe if you're not specific to the sport of weightlifting, for example. And then to add to that and take it a step further, if you want a shoe that's going to be flat but give you a ton of articulation, then you could start exploring different stack heights in training shoes. So for example, the way a Vans is going to flex and move is going to be a lot different than a barefoot shoe. And these are both flat shoes, so you can look at it from that lens, but essentially, you might wanna use a flat shoe for lifting because if you do have good mobility to begin with or if your anatomy aligns with a zero millimeter heel toe drop with your shoe, that could be a reason to reach for the style of footwear and they can also be useful depending on the workout and what you're doing in that workout because a flat shoe can be a little bit more beneficial for certain exercises. All right, so why would you want to use a cross training shoe or a training shoe or workout shoe that has a slightly higher heel toe drop? So typically you'll see workout shoes with heel to toe drops that range from like two to nine-ish millimeters. Why would you want to reach for this heel height for your training context? So if you're doing a cross training workout or a CrossFit wad, for example, where you're varying your movements and going through different exercises, a little heel can be pretty beneficial. So for example, if you're squatting and you are somebody who does like having a bit more heel, but you don't want to wear a weightlifting shoe, obviously for a cross training workout, this can be a great option because it's going to give you a bit more of a drop, but it's not going to be fully flat to where you might be coming up on your toes. So when it comes to your varying workout context, a low heel to toe drop can typically align with most folks. And I kind of think of the heel to toe drops used in cross training shoes as being like the best of all worlds style of heel. So if for example, you don't necessarily need a full flat shoe, but you do want some heel, then you can opt for models with like two to four millimeter drops. And that will typically scratch that flatter itch while also giving you a tiny bit of heel. And and then if you are lanky like myself and you do like a slightly higher heel, you can reach for drops that are like six to nine millimeters in height. So essentially, if you're somebody who's doing cross training workouts, CrossFit wads, or you vary your training on a regular basis, you might want to explore different training shoes with different drops because even like four to five millimeters of a difference in a drop can make a pretty big difference for your overall anatomy. So finding that drop that consistently works well for you, I think could be really important. And why cross training shoes typically have from two to nine millimeters is because it like captures like the widest audience regarding how much heel some lifters and athletes will want with their training shoes. 
All right, so now why would you reach for a heel elevated shoe or a weightlifting shoe for your training over a flat shoe? So typically weightlifting shoes will have heel to toe drops that range from 15 millimeters to about 25 millimeters. So that's about 0.6 to a full inch of heel elevation. That's a lot different than a flat shoe and a cross training shoe, especially when you consider how that heel elevation is gonna change your lifting mechanics. So typically folks will reach for weightlifting shoes if they're doing a squat variation where they want a more upright torso position, if they're clean and jerking, if they're snatching, or if they're doing accessory movements that they want a quad bias with, or if they're doing like machine work, then they're working with a machine that just doesn't align with their anatomy when they're using a flatter shoe. So that's where a weightlifting shoe can be beneficial. So when you are lifting and training with a weightlifting shoe, there are a couple of things that will typically follow with your overall mechanics. So let's say you're doing a high bar squat. So typically a weightlifting shoe will allow you to maintain a slightly more upright torso position, get a little bit more squat depth and allow those knees to translate forward a little bit more over the toes. So now why is this? So when you are training with a flat shoe, so let's pretend this is a flat shoe right here. And then let's pretend this is my shin. When you are squatting, so let's say we're doing a high bar squat, and let's say your range of motion stops here with the flat shoe, that might not necessarily lead to the best mechanics for your overall anatomy. If we had the same level of range of motion and we elevate the heel, what essentially happens is we're gonna allow those knees to come forward a little bit more over the toes. We're putting them into an environment that feeds a little bit more into forward knee translation. If the knees contract more over the toes, you'll typically get a little bit more quad. You'll typically feel a little bit more balance to sit back and deeper into your squat. And that will often result in a more upright torso position. Now, obviously there's individuality there based on your anatomy, but that is often what folks will experience when using a heel elevated shoe. So if you're somebody that finds that it's really difficult to squat with a barbell on your back with a flat shoe, a heel elevated shoe might translate better to your anatomical needs. Also, if you're doing a ton of clean and jerking and snatching, you're probably going to want a weightlifting shoe. And if you're a recreational lifter that wants a little bit of variety regarding the heel to toe drop using your shoes and how it's going to translate to your overall performance, whether that's for quad bias dumbbell work, whether that's for your squat sets, a weightlifting shoe or a heel elevated shoe can be a really great tool to keep in your lifting toolbox. And this is why I don't like the mindset of like, oh, flat shoes are always best. Like there's a lot of missing context if you're taking that reductionist point of view with your footwear selection. This is also why I suggest athletes and lifters have one of each style of footwear so they can rotate and plug and play to see what works best for them based on the context of their training. Shoes are like tools and we wanna to use the right tools for the right job. So with a flat shoe, to quickly summarize when you might want to use a flat shoe, if you don't have any current mobility limitations with your lower body mechanics, a flat shoe can be a great option. They can be a great option for anybody who's a bit more hip dominant with their squats. So for low bar squatters, typically they'll find that flat shoes feel a little bit more comfortable for their squat needs. And if you're somebody who does want to actually improve their range of motion with their ankles, a flat shoe can be a really good tool for that. Now, obviously be strategic with your exercise selection. Don't try to fit a square peg into a round hole when opting for a flat shoe when it comes to like very high threshold exercises where they might not feed that well into your lifting mechanics. A flat shoe can also be a great option for anybody who is doing deadlifts or RDLs or any exercise where a flatter foot position can be a little bit more beneficial for your lifting mechanics. And then with workout shoes with lower heel toe drops, these will typically be best for anybody doing CrossFit wads, cross training workouts, and basically any style of workout that is going to vary greatly with the exercise selection used. A lower heel toe drop will typically be good for most folks. And it's kind of like this all encompassing heel toe drop for a lot of different things while feeding into good mechanics for the most part. A heel elevated shoe or a weightlifting shoe will be best for athletes and lifters that need a little bit more help with their squat depth while maintaining a more upright torso position. So if you're doing front squats, if you're doing high bar squats and you find that you constantly fold over with a flat shoe, a heel elevated shoe or a weightlifting shoe can be really beneficial. They're great for folks who are constantly working on their snatch and clean and jerk and they can be beneficial for athletes and lifters that want a shoe that can feed a little bit better into a quad bias when they are going for that with their training. So once again, think of shoes as tools. You wanna to use the right tools for the right jobs, and hopefully this video was able to elaborate a little bit more as to why you might want to use each style of footwear for your training. But as always, if you have additional questions on this topic, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always, drop a like on the video, drop to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.